people, not tax cuts, but demand, and working people don't have the money in their pockets to create demand right now, and that's the problem with this country, and Paul Ryan's blind to that. Thank you, and if you could go ahead and ask him a question, what question But I'm not here today just because I'm a constituent, I'm here because we have a good jobs crisis in this country. We've got a good jobs crisis here in southeast Wisconsin, and we've got a good jobs crisis in the first congressional district. You're all right. This jobs crisis is created, it's been created by the policies supported and advocated by politicians like Paul Ryan. Yeah. It's been these tax cuts for the rich, yeah. unfair tax advantages, for the big banks and greedy corporations that broke our economy. It's this deregulation and these job killing trade deals that have created the good jobs crisis. Yeah. So I'm here to ask Congressman Ryan one simple question. One question, that's it. How, how is doing more of the same going to fix this good jobs crisis? That's right, it is not going to fix our good jobs crisis that we are facing. With 40,000 plus people in this district and millions more around the country, we all want to know, what are you going to do, Paul Ryan, to fix this good jobs crisis? We know the answer. Paul Ryan should know the answer, and that's why he's been ducking constituents for weeks on end. Because he knows, we know the truth. This is a good jobs crisis, people are hurting, and it's because of politicians like him and the policies they support that we are living with the good jobs crisis every day. Now I want to bring up here some of the people who've been living this good jobs crisis and are trying to make their voice heard so their congressman listens, so that we can fix this good jobs crisis. I want to bring up to the stage here first, Jessica Jaglowski and her son, Nathaniel. I'm here to talk today about the significant cuts that Paul Ryan is planning to make to Medicaid. They would affect so many people in this country, um, specifically here in Wisconsin, they would affect people on, on Medicaid programs. I'm talking about my family who needs to be on Badger Care because my husband, who works full time, is offered health insurance that costs $15,000 a year just for the premium. Wow. Then there's a $3,000 deductible and lots of things aren't even covered beyond that. We have three small children. We can't afford to be without health care. I also work part time, but I'm not offered any insurance through my employer. So there are lots of people like myself and my husband who are working hard. We just don't have any affordable options through our health care. People who work for small businesses, nonprofits, farmers, lots of people who are stuck in the middle. We're working hard, but we have no, if we, Badger Care is not an option, we need to have some sort of affordable option, and that's not made for us. These, these uh, um, cuts will affect people significantly, and he's not, he's not caring about all of these people. And in fact, if they do make these cuts, it's going to cost more because taxpayers are going to cost more when people don't have preventative care and have to go to the emergency room. So I, I'm asking Paul Ryan to seriously consider what he's doing to people. Consider health care as a basic need for people. Thank you. And I need to introduce our next speaker, Jeremy Mitchell. Six years ago, I decided to make Wisconsin my, my home. And why I am here to talk to Ryan in my home, the place he represents, is that he talks about competition. I want the school to be a competitor in the global job market. 
I am now $65,000 in debt. I learned everything from finance and economics to marketing and engineering as a business student. And I have not found a job above $12,000. How much did I make last year? $8,000. Compare that to the health insurance I need, to my student loans, which are crippling me, it's more than my rent. Ryan says be competitive. Am I not competitive by going to school and getting a great education and getting a degree? Is that competition? If I'm so competitive, why haven't I gotten a decent job in my home? Why is it? Why can I find a decent job in Wisconsin, in Kenosha, in his district, as a competitive person? Do I have to compete on wages? What happened to my American dream? He sold it out before I was able to even get a job and live the American dream. I want a good job. Do you need a good job? Yeah. Why are we here? Yeah. Good jobs. You want them now? Yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I'm now watching a good friend of mine, Mark. Mark Stevens. I'm here today like many people. Jobless and looking for a good job. I can't find anything better than sporadic temp work where I live in Kenosha, where I've li lived my whole life. I can't even move out of my home. I'm 22 and I still live with my father. Not because I'm lazy, but because I can't find a good job that I can afford apartments, that I can afford a living on on my own because there's no good jobs out there. I can find a couple temp jobs that last a couple months, but with no benefits. Should I happen to get sick? I'm, I'm out of luck. Like a lot of people in the first district. And, yep. And, all these unemployed people, they're not just going to magically find jobs when we keep giving tax cuts to the rich. It's proven to not work, and Paul Ryan needs to do something about it. That's right. Let me introduce Sarah Wagner. Hi, I'm Sarah Wagner, and I am a constituent of Paul Ryan's, born and raised in Wisconsin, Kenosha County. And I'm here because I'm terrified for my children and grandchildren. I told them that if they followed all the rules and went to school and got a good education, that they could live the American dream. And it's not happening for them. And that terrifies me. I have a granddaughter who is three months old, and I look at her and think, what does her future hold? It does not look good. The poor child comes from a working class family. All right. People like Sarah, people like Jessica, Mark and Jeremy, we're going to go inside along with dozens of other people to make sure that Congressman Paul Ryan hears our voices. Here's the voices of his constituents saying this is a jobs crisis. This is a good jobs crisis and he needs to ditch these failed policies and start doing things to create good jobs here in the first district. Some of us can afford the freight to get inside, 15 bucks. Oh yeah. But some of us can't, because as we've made known here today, this is a good jobs crisis. These are tough economic times, and some folks can't afford it. So some people are going to be trying to join us coming inside, and we'd like your support to make sure that those folks inside, these corporate fat cat donors, understand that they aren't the only ones that deserve to bend the ear of their congressman. We got folks who are gonna try to come in with us even though they can't afford to. We got folks going in to make our voices heard because Paul Ryan needs to know this is a good jobs crisis, we're holding him accountable, and we want a new direction in this country. No more of these failed policies. No more of these attacks on Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. This is a good jobs crisis, we're gonna end it now, and it starts with people like us. All right, what do we want? Jobs!